want to show you some of the things that I got from the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair here in the U.S. And I went yesterday. The event is happening the whole weekend. So it started on Friday and goes through today, which is Sunday. So there are a number of vendors. Actually, one of my favorite vendors was not there, and I didn't know that that would be the case. So here are some of the places that you can find in the program. There uh, was an animal show and there was judging and things happening. Um, there were workshops. I did not go to any of them. Davis Arena is the main place where there were vendors and also Barn F as well. I did not go to the fleece show. Uh, I don't even actually think we would have had time. So, but I think it's something I might want to check out in the future. So even though our plan was to go early, I went with some fiber friends we did not get there until yesterday early afternoon. We drove for three hours and we didn't get there on Friday night because it was raining so much. So you can see there were many, many vendors, including Miss Babs. I often see people at, at Rhinebeck talking about waiting for Miss Babs in line for a very long time. And at SAF, there's almost no wait uh, whenever I've come gone by the booth. So Something to consider if you're in the southeast and you end up going to SAF, which is always the weekend after Rhinebeck, you may want to wait and get your Babs yarn at that point. This year was the 25-year celebration, which is very exciting. Uh, I'll go in order of the things that I purchased, except for this first thing is not in order, and that is just a SAF pin for my fringe bag. It just looks like that. It was three bucks, fairly affordable, so I was happy to get that. It's quite cute there are sheep on it the first thing that I bought which I wasn't really expecting to buy I don't generally buy bags because or project bags because I tend to make my own but I do uh, other than the fringe bought fringe field bags this may be actually the first one that I've ever bought and it was from whimsy stitches designs and I really really like this retailer I thought that the bags were very reasonably priced and they were vinyl and I just, I don't have any bags with yarn uh, motifs on the fabrics. So I decided to get this one and it seemed like to be really great quality and I was gonna use it for all of my sock projects. I also really like the key fob or I guess that's what they're called, but the little handle which is detachable and I can take it everywhere with me which seems really, really nice and it's a generous size. So anyway, I'm really happy about this bag. And there's not really much more to say about it. I know a lot of retailers, retailers make bags like this, but for whatever reason, this one in particular stood out to me. And actually I'm realizing this is inside now. The person who makes them gave me this really, really cute stitch holder. And I was, or I guess uh, progress keeper. And I was really, really happy to get that too because it's so cute. At that booth, I also got some pins. I love these bulb style pins and I can always use some more. So these are a little bit shinier than the ones I have now. And I got this enamel pin, which it has a little measuring tape on it. Super cute. This is the card of the retailer who is from New Orleans in case that interests you. Next, I went to one of my favorite shops. So I went to SAF with this store-bought hat. Uh, and I don't know how well this color is gonna show up on here, but this is kind of a cognac color and it's an acrylic hat that I really love and I wanted to recreate it in wool. So I basically was like, if I can find this wool at, a, at any shop, I will be really, really happy about that. Uh, and so that's ultimately what I was looking for. And then I was able to go to one of my favorite shops, which is based in North Carolina. So this is Hillside Farms and I got to get this color which uh, they described as well first of all it doesn't have a colorway name and it was um, mistakenly priced because uh, this is actually $16 but it's fingering weight and uh, it was supposed to be 16 but they sold it to me for 14.50 anyway because they're so so nice and they also have open farm days where you can visit and just hang out on the farm and knit and spin if you'd like but they sell a lot of fiber and i bought fiber from them last year and this year i was so happy to find this color which apparently is called tobacco gold and it basically matches my hat it's a little bit deeper and more variegated which i like a lot more so i got this yarn which i'm stoked about 
at the same booth, I also got this yarn, which is, let's see, this is a worsted two ply and it's a brown, uh, it's, it's really nice. It was $14 uh, and again, comes from, the wool comes from their farm and they're just such nice people and I'm always happy to support them if I can. And their farm, their yarn is so, so, so affordable and I don't know if you can see the color very well, but yeah, it's like a pretty, it's probably uh, washed out a little bit here, but it's a deep brown. So after we exited the main venue where all the vendors were, there was a sort of side barn space and I just got some Chagu bamboo. This is really funny because I really dislike bamboo needles, but recently I've gotten into making these little, I don't even know what you would call it, <laughs> trinkets, plushy things. I, I really like them. These are the Susan B. Anderson pattern. Um, fall harvest, I think. In any case, I really enjoyed making the acorns and the pumpkin, I made another acorn. Anyway, they take a size three and obviously bamboo needles are ideal for those and these just happen to be half off and the five inch side, which I, size, which I thought was for perfect for making these little uh, stuffed fall items. So anyway, pretty simple, love chagu, can't go wrong there. And then in that same side barn, again, I'm talking about how I don't buy project bags, but I loved this project bag so much. And I tend to knit sweaters, sweaters all the time. This bottom part, it's like, meh, it's good. It could be different. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but mostly what attracted me was the top sweater part. And there's this leather handle right here so that when you cinch the bag, you can carry it around using this handle, which I thought was so cute. Um, it's a generous size. Anyway, I uh, love the pattern, love the bag. It's well made. It has good interfacing. Sometimes I consider buying bags just to support people and their craft. And ultimately I end up really disliking the interfacing that's inside. So this one was so nice and I highly recommend it. And I guess I should, let's see, the, the person or the business is Twisted Yarn and Fiber. Yep, Twisted Yarn and Fiber. Apparently there's an Etsy shop as well. Highly recommend this. Thought that it was reasonably priced. And I just, I love this fabric. <laughs> they also have it in pink and green as well. Next, I went to the Green Mountain Spinnery and I found this rust color yarn, which I really liked. And I was thinking about making the Andrea Maori sweater the throwback sweater from this and i know that it's designed with superwash but ultimately i wanted to make it with just wool non-superwash wool green mountain spinnery of course has great yarn this colorway is called diamond diamonds and rust and this is actually their dk but because it's woolen spun it's most likely going to swatch a bit bigger and essentially end up with the equivalent of the worsted superwash. So I bought one skein and if this ends up working out, I already picked out which colors I would go, I would pair with it for that throwback sweater, uh, but I only got one skein of it and Green Mountain Spinnery, can't go wrong. And you can, I can get that online as well. Last but not least at SAF, I got this soap. I had <laughs> no plan, uh, no plans of buying soap, but it has neem in it and I love everything with neem and it has actual neem oil um, in the ingredients. And in general, the person was saying that it's a, maybe like 30% neem oil. It's made by the person who sells them, uh, made in the USA. Can't go wrong, you know, just a bit of soap. And yeah, I just, I could talk forever about neem. I use neem toothpaste. <laughs> this is all probably too much information, but there it is. So that is essentially everything that I got at SAF, which is way more than I plan to get. And I know that that's a little bit funny. Typically people go and plan to get quite a bit, but that just wasn't the case this time around. I have quite a few projects lined up and I'm perfectly happy to stick with that. But of course I like the experience of going to SAF and that's ultimately what I went for. Now, a few weeks ago I was teaching a knitting class and my students asked me if I was going planning to stop by Friends and Fiberworks, which is also in Asheville, about 20 minutes away from where a staff is held. And I said that I didn't know about the store, but that I would be interested in checking it out. And when I looked it up online and said that it was the largest 
yarn store in the southeast which i felt like was a very <laughs> bold claim and so i'll show you the things that i got there the store is about four thousand square feet and it mostly sells commercial yarns uh, as you might expe expect the thing that i they had that i typically don't come across very much in my local yarn shops or at all in my local yarn shops but just in general the shops that i go to is the following yarn let Lopi. and i know for some of y'all this is like old news and for me i was very excited to knit with, knit with it i'm excited to make some mittens and it looks like it kind of matches my sweater yarn right here uh, but actually this is a lot warmer of a color and i really like that and then i paired it with this cooler tone and i'm excited to knit with each of those i guess these are the colorways 52 and 54 and in general i was just very happy to find these it was a good um, affordable find they also had plotulopi but um, i did not get that however while I was at the store, I went back into this one of the side rooms and then I realized that actually they had two used spinning wheels. So I'm gonna show you what I ended up buying. So in one of the back rooms, as I said, there were two spinning wheels. This was one of them. And it's the Luat S15 made in Holland, which is no longer manufactured. There is the S10 and the S15. So it came with a flyer and a bobbin and this top piece, which I didn't really see other wheels have online, but I think it's for a yarn winder once you're finished plying uh, for you to be able to attach it right there. And it makes a nice carrying handle in any case. And then this is the bottom. Now you can see there are little dings and things like that, but ultimately it was in working shape. Now it is missing the lazy Kate that comes with it. And I wasn't sure about this, so the yarn owner, the yarn shop owner was at SAF actually at the time, and it seems like some people were filling in for this person, and they didn't know very much about the wheels, so they called the yarn shop owner who said, yeah, this uh, wheel is being sold for 250 and essentially someone is just selling it through our store, and I asked about the Lazy Kate, and I was like, well, you know, it's missing, and so I'd like to know if this is the final price, and it only comes with one bobbin, and the person said, okay, let me call the person who's selling it through our shop and just ask. And the person called back and said, if you pay in cash, um, I'll sell it to you for $175, which I was very happy to do because it's a great wheel. It's in great working order. There aren't that many parts that can break and things like that. And the wheel band seems to be fine. I'm going to replace this little cup here that attaches the footman to the wheel itself. Um, this one works perfectly fine. There's a little piece on it that's cracked, so that's fairly easy to replace. And then I'm gonna replace the little uh, footman to treadle uh, attachment. This piece I might sand, I'm not really sure. Overall, it works really well and I'm so happy to have it, um, particularly considering it's not made anymore. In general, Overall, I would say that SAF was a success. I got a spinning wheel, two project bags, three skeins of yarn, and overall, I feel like my budget was on point. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. And by the way, if you have an S15, or if you know very much about the S15s, please let me know. I would love to know more information about them and why they were discontinued. They seem very similar to the S10, except there's no hole in the wheel itself, which often the S10, or not often, which the S10 has. So if you have an S15 or if you know where I can find more information about it, please let me know. I've been doing some preliminary research and there isn't very much information, which is unfortunate, but overall it works well. And I have a friend who, when I called yesterday and said, hey, this wheel is on sale, she said, you must absolutely get this wheel because she also has one. So I'm excited to play around with it. Let me know if you have one, if you like it, if you have other Louettes, and I'll chat with you next time. Bye.